Welcome to Ignite Intimacy, a podcast exploring intimacy, romantic relationships, sexuality, and everything that relates to these hot topics. We're going in. Are you ready? This is your host, Laura Aisha. Let's do this. It was absolutely incredible to be here at South by Southwest. Our panel conversation, Making Disclosure Sexy, is live on the podcast, episode 108. So make sure you check it out. It's already up and posted. And I'm super excited to carry on the conversations about sexual health in the month of March with Lauren Weiniger, who is the co-founder of The Safe App. So check it out. This is a powerful and brief conversation because Lauren was heading to the airport and I was stoked to grab her for just a couple of minutes here, but it will be an informative conversation about STD testing, her product, the Safe Sex app, and how you can utilize it to get tested quickly and easily, affordably, and to share your status with your partners. So check it out, Ignite Intimacy. We love you all. Thank you so much for being on the journey. And here we go. And stick around till the end because we do have another poem from Miss Noel at the very end of this conversation. And if you haven't yet, pull out your cell phone, open up a text message and send the word IGNITE to 444-999. We have giveaways from Foria and Dame Products for two lucky winners. So again, pull out your cell phone, open up a text message and send the word IGNITE to 444-999 and we'll pick two lucky winners by March 20th. All right, enjoy the conversation. Oh my gosh, what is going on, Lauren? Hello, hello. This uh, is awesome. <laughs> so in the middle of South by Mayhem, we yes, are, yes. are rocking the system and working we have it out. our own private room. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome. Mm-hmm. So this is Laura Aisha, your host, Ignite Intimacy, and so happy to be here with Lauren Weiniger, who is the co-founder of SAFE and the SAFE app. And so Lauren was on our panel, our South by Southwest panel, which aired last week. So if you haven't checked it, check it out. It's all about making disclosure sexy. And because we're focusing on sexual health here in the month of March, I wanted to have a one-on-one conversation with Lauren about this app because I know that part of the evolution of you know, how we're talking about sex, how we're talking about our status, how we're taking care of our sexual health and the part of our sexual health that has to do directly with getting tested, sharing our, you know, disclosing our status, you know, if you have anything and, and just really having that conversation is super important. So it's really exciting to have you on the line and like you're, you're disrupting a very old, sort of, you know, you do it in like this very sort of robotic, like uh, uh, kind of way. And now you're saying like, no, let's use what we have with technology and healthcare and bring everyone together into the conversation so that makes it easier to get tested. It makes it easier to disclose. And then we can all have safer, happier, more amazing sex, right? Absolutely. Um, (laughs) I could not have said it better myself. So, you know, I like to... I like to dive in and allow our guests to share with our audience who they are, like what kind of, I know you've got a really dynamic story and you've been touched in different ways through this experience of, of sexual health. So I'd love for you to share a little bit about who you are and how you got into Safe App. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so it's interesting. Most of my career was was not in sexual health or sex at all. I was uh, was in finance. I was in healthcare, but very much the biotech side of things. But it's interesting how your your life you can't plan it forward, but it always kind of makes perfect sense in high, hindsight. And oh yeah. I could not be doing this today had I not done every single one of those experiences. 
But it starts, you know, I've always cared about this issue. My cousin died of AIDS when I was young. It's actually my cousin's boyfriend, but they were both, it was uh, cousin Adam and cousin cousin George. They were the fun cousins, right? Mm. And that was my first experience with it. Uh, Because of that, I I cared about it already. And in high school, I was actually in this, it was this theater company. And the whole premise of peer education through theater, it's better for kids to learn from other kids than from their teachers wagging their fingers, right? Uh, And I hadn't even had sex yet. So she was relatively old virgin, but, (laughs) but, you know, here I was awkward already at 16, I was 14 to 18. I did this, but we'd be going to schools, everything from private schools, inner city schools, detention centers, and doing these skits where we'd be in character and talking about coming of age issues, most of which had to do with sex, STDs, as well as pregnancy, Mm -hmm. everything kind of in between. And it was this really incredible experience because you'd go in, especially in some of these schools, it's, you know, kids would be pretty rowdy. They don't want to listen to this and it's sex and it's awkward and you're teenagers. So mm-hmm. everything is. And then uh, they'd have the opportunity to ask us questions after in character. And you'd have these kids, many of them like kind of rough and like kids that seemed a lot older than me at the time, really kind of open up and be like, wait, well, I thought, I thought this, I thought you could just pull out and it's safe. I didn't Mm. think you could get, I thought you couldn't get HIV if you're, you know, this or that, if I'm straight or if that, right? Mm -hmm. And it's just mind boggling how much misinformation there was out there, particularly in some of the communities that are highest risk. Mm -hmm. So anyway, this all, you know, that kind of stayed there in high school, something I, again, cared about, but it was uh, Burning Man a few years ago where Mm. the idea for safe really came together. Uh, I've been friends with my co-founder for like several years before that, we were camping together. He was dating a girl who, like many people, will only have sex with you if you've been tested, and she wants to see uh, some proof of that, some documentation. And he, you know, was supposed to have gotten tested, made an appointment at his doctor. He had to cancel it, and, you know, it was another two weeks. He didn't have time. Long mm-hmm. story short, he didn't. And it was a big deal. She wanted to have sex at Burning Man. I don't blame her. Um, <laughs> and so, so it kind of So was it kind of like he, he lost out? And- yeah. He lost out, yeah. so he's disappointed. He's not, you know, getting laid. She's upset because mm-hmm. she wants to, but she's not going to compromise on where, we you know, that's good for her, for her right? That's great. Exactly. And it just got us all talking about, you know, why, why is it this difficult to get tested? Why is it this difficult to verify someone's status, to show your status? I mean, I know for me, like, I, you know, I, I get tested regularly. Two times the, like a year, I, I go to my gyno for, you know, just regular annual but you don't get anything. There's not a patient portal even that for mine that you can log into. Uh, you call them a few weeks later and they say that they would call you if there was something up, but otherwise there's nothing, there's nothing to show. And so we are like, well, we can create this actually. Mm. It was just mm-hmm. now, it would not have been possible to do until really right then from a like legal regulatory perspective. I can mm-hmm. go into that, but probably not that interesting. But well, in a nutshell, there was a new congressional ruling like that year before that said the patient owns their data, which what's crazy is that wasn't always the case. Like you own your data. That was not always black and white there. So interesting. Right. And so because of that, we're like, well, even though these big old healthcare players are notorious for not sharing data, and that is still very much the case, it's pretty incredible that we've managed to to get these partners that we have with all these big players. But we knew it was possible. And Mm so we started, you know, looking into it. And then we got Quest on board and we got the CDC on board and we got LabCorp. And now, you know, we have a number of other large ones. So we can import your data for free from wherever you were last tested. Cool. So that means there's no barrier there and there's there's no excuse as well not to have it. And we're giving the data back to the patient where it belongs. Amazing. Yeah. And so is this a membership? Is it, how, how is it? No, so the app is totally free to download. It's totally free to import your results from anywhere. And then if you want to get tested, then you can either, so you can just book an appointment uh, through the app directly at labs. Right now we're going to have at-home options and whatnot later. And if you have insurance and you want to use it, then it's generally free covered or your copay. Or if you don't have insurance or, or your insurance is going to cover it, and our, our um, platform checks that for you as well. So you're not okay. hit with this like really cool $1,200 bill, which I've certainly gotten, right? Yeah. Then it's only $99 out of pocket. So okay. that is by far the cheapest option. And that is for the full test panel. And for us, the full test panel is uh, gonorrhea, syphilis, chlamydia, hep C, HIV, and then HSV2 is optional. Okay. 
Yeah. I'm and so HSV2 like, is mm-hmm. herpes. Um, is genital, ge- genital generally herpes. genital herpes. herpes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Because they don't, they don't, I mean, from my experience, and I think this kind of runs across the board, they don't offer HSV2 tests unless, unless you, you either have an outbreak or mm-hmm. you specifically ask, ask I, or, you know, request, I would like this test. Exactly. It's, it's something that's controversial for a number of reasons. So the part of it is the test for HSV2, uh, again, which is genital herpes, although noting that you can also now get, HS, get genital herpes from HSV1, it tests for the antibodies. So you may have those antibodies and never have an outbreak. Mm-hmm. Or if you, there's, uh, if you had the chicken pox, you also could possibly test positive, which a lot of people. So that said, it's somewhat accurate, and it's, it's, de- it's a debatable thing even within the scientific community about that. There actually is a very accurate test out of the lab in Seattle that we are going to start offering very soon. Cool. So we want it, you know, for a lot of people, for me, you know, when I realized, when you were kind of first starting this company, I had assumed I had been tested all this time. You know, I like many people, I'd go to my doctor, a gyno, say, hey, test me for everything. I assume that's everything. So mm-hmm. I kind of assumed, I mean, statistically, I should be positive. So I, I, you know, I went and I was like, wait, have you been testing me for this? And she's like, well, are you having symptoms, an outbreak? I'm like, no. And she's like, well, then you don't need to be tested. I'm like, well, you know, I would like to know. Yeah. Um, because, you know, I've also heard just so many stories from friends of mine that are positive that didn't know and that found out because they passed along to a partner. And Are we me, talking like, specifically about herpes? About or? herpes, okay. yeah. yeah. And so for me, like... It, I would like to know whether or not I have it so I can know whether or not and when I might be putting somebody at risk. Like mm-hmm. that for me it would be worse. And everybody is different. Uh, but for me, that is – it's definitely what makes sense. Another reason they don't test is because the uh, psychological – it's a psychological stress of finding out even if you won't have an outbreak. That's specifically what it says through the CDC guidelines. Mm, and my perspective is – what if attacking this problem instead on the stigma side is actually the better way to go? And if it's, if it doesn't need to be such a high psychological stress, then I think that we have a greater chance at actually reducing it. And people can know whether they're more likely or less likely to have it if we can inform people and also get people treatment. Like, Baltrex is extraordinarily effective. Mm-hmm. It's sometimes difficult for people to get access to that, right? So we're going to have the pharmacy that goes live very soon, like in about a month. Cool. And so so people, and again, and it's annoying too. Like I'm, I'm sure you know, it's like you go to your doctor, I don't know how often yours makes you go, but every three to four months generally, and you still have it. And you get that prescription, you have to go to the pharmacy. So like why? So we, uh, it's just like a little questionnaire in the app. Fill it out. You get your prescriptions mailed to you and non good packaging. Amazing. And so, so just like in general, as you were developing the app, what did you discover about how people are or aren't taking care of their sexual health? Yeah. Well, it's when I was developing it or now that it's been out. I think both. Yeah. Like in the journey, what have you discovered? Yeah. On the one hand, things that are somewhat shocking, but not that shocking that it's so bimodal. There's a relatively large population of people that are getting tested regularly, that are aware that rates are at an all-time high and whatnot. But then, and it varies so much by like demo and population. The, the gay male community is really good about it. Also, people that need to be on PrEP, that are or choose to be on PrEP, have to be tested every uh, three months in order to get that prescription. Okay. So testing has become really a norm and expected, right? And then you have a lot of you know younger women, like you're... 35 and below that are thinking about it and generally also getting tested in general. And you've got men that have never been tested in their life. I've met a lot of yeah, <laughs> a so lot of the men I've met. I, I feel like at least half have yeah. said, oh, I've never been tested. Or I feel like, you know, the public health community, honestly, like, I mean, look, we have a lot of partners there and I think they've done a lot of good. But I also think look, there's been a failing in the system if we've been trying to manage this by only get it by through women and not men like we in heterosexual relationships that's half and I think if you look at um, Gardasil for instance right so Gardasil was until recently only given to girls and only to young girls not Mm. to guys because guys were the carrier but because they hadn't linked any disease in that population which I feel like the population should really be everyone in that population but and this is like a medical and clinical trial FDA kind of a thing it's not it's not that it's Merck's fault because I've actually talked to them and I was yelling at them. And I, it's, it's <laughs> and really, Gardasil's for? Uh, Gardasil is the vaccine for to prevent 
many of the strains of HPV and, okay. and many of the, the, the most harmful ones that, that directly uh, are linked to cancer. Okay. So it's linked, uh, it's a leading cause of um, cervical cancer, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, but now it's also linked to throat cancer. Wow. Yeah, from oral sex, okay. right? Okay, And uh, colorectal cancer, so like butt cancer. So basically okay. it's something that it's, it, you get it where you come in contact with it. Mm-hmm. But it, the vaccine's very effective. And so now they only a few years ago started vaccinating men. And they also just increased the age from like, oh God, I can't remember the number, but I think it was like 24. Now it's 45 or something of this okay. nature. So great. Like we can, these things are all preventable and yeah. they're, they're mostly preventable. They're all treatable. Many are curable. We just need to have these systems in place and the education in place and the access for people to to get what they need, to know what they have, to know what their partners have, and to know what options are available regardless. You know, and, and I think for a lot of girls, we were learning about sex from our friends, right? But your gyna would suggest things to you, whereas men are not going to the doctor or their doctors aren't pushing it on them. Totally. And I think that's a huge failure. Another thing that's been interesting, though, is just how, like, big the spread of, how wide the spread is. So uh, our users... And it makes sense that our users should be like more evangelical tester types, and a lot of them are taking advantage of the super cheap testing option. Mm-hmm. We've got not an insignificant number of people getting tested every two weeks, and there's, really, yeah, and that's not wow. that's not the recommended guidelines. Sure. I, I I am not a doctor, so nothing that I say here is medical advice, by the way. But I know a lot, and you know that's look that's what the porn industry recommends or that requires actually. Okay, and. And while, yeah, of course, like there's latency periods, which means it takes all, it takes some time. It takes about a month for HIV to show up, for instance, and other things. But hey, if you're having regular sex and you're getting tested regularly, then you're increasing your odds of catching something early if you do have something. And, mm-hmm. and then therefore treating it or not passing it on. Yeah. And wow. Oh, my gosh. It's just, it's, it's amazing. We've come a really far way or a long way. You know, we've come a long way in the development uh, and the access to testing, STD testing, understanding and knowing, you know, where we stand. And that's, that is one essential piece to sexual health. We had Doug Braun Harvey at the top of this month, I think it's episode number 107, and he talks about the six principles to sexual health. And this is one of them, Mm -hmm. right? Like sexual health includes uh, it's a whole world mm-hmm. of of different things that we want to be aware of. And so, you know, I mean, as someone who has been living with herpes and has used that as a catalyst to developing deeper levels of self-love, building confidence, dealing with rejection, mm-hmm. you know, there's something really powerful about just our choices, you know, and like, the choice about whether or not to put this penis in my mouth, Mm -hmm. (laughs) the choice of whether or not to, you know, have sex with that person and the choice about when, how, where I will get tested right now. I'm nomading. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, something like your app is a perfect way for me to access testing wherever I am, because Mm -hmm. I'm pretty much constantly traveling right now. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited because I'm due. Mm -hmm. So, so I'm going to, that's going to be like the next thing that I do is get on the app and figure out, okay, where am I going next and schedule a test there. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And you can do it like mostly there's generally tests available that day, appointments available that day or the next day. So you can do it on the fly and it Mm -hmm. takes about 15 minutes, like usually tops. Yeah. Well, and so how do people sign up? Like what's yeah. the process? Yeah, so uh, so you uh, download the app. It's the Safe Sex app on the App Store. You can search for it. We're not on Android yet, but we will be up on the Play Store uh, brace very soon, probably within the month. Great. Uh, you can also go on our website, safeapp.me. So there's download links there. And so you download the app. It's free. You create an account. Uh, we need to verify that it's you. And so uh, that that takes uh, just you know a few minutes. Then you have two options. One is import your results. So if you were already testing, you just want to grab that data. You just put in the state you were last tested. You type in your doctor or provider's name. We have a database of all of them, so it just pulls it in. It's actually going behind them into the electronic health record system, so it's automatically pulling that data in. You're not uploading anything. You're not typing in anything. Uh, there's no faking it. Not in this way, anyway. Nice, uh, nice. I feel like there's a better faking it joke than I can do <laughs> Don't fake it, but 
You can't now. <laughs> we'll work on that. There's no faking it till you make it exactly. with the sex app. That's the deal. You got to keep it real. Exactly. All about keeping it real. <laughs> so then, cool. Yeah, you have your status in your phone. Or if you need to get tested, so you need to get tested, then you just uh, book an appointment. It There's like a Yelp cell interface, so you just type in location or geolocates to like right where you are. You pick a location. Cool, that one's close. It shows up when the available slots are. You book it. If you're using insurance, then you put in your insurance info so we can verify that uh, you're, it, that we, we take all insurance, but every plan is different. And so we want to make sure that you know before you're going. It takes a, like a second or a few seconds, probably 20. And then, uh, or if you're using cash pay, you just put in your credit card info and we charge it on the phone. Sweet. Yeah. You just show up, you bring your ID, and you get taken care of. Amazing. Okay, so the website again is? It's www.safeapp, S-A-F-E-A-P-P.me, like me, myself, and I. Great. Okay, and then the actual app in the app store? Yes, it's it's Safe, the Safe Sex app. So The Safe Sex yeah, app. Yeah, so generally just searching Safe Sex app. That's best. It comes up at first then. Awesome. And mm-hmm. what's your mission? What what are you out to create with all of this? Look, well, our, there's a shorter-term mission and longer-term, right? Mm-hmm. And short-term is our mission is to end the spread and stigma of STDs in our lifetime. But we also see this as a longer-term play for really transforming healthcare. Mm-hmm. Uh, healthcare is a third of our GDP right now. Mm. It's the last industry where there is no transparency in pricing. Mm. People aren't doing certain things to, to prevent or to improve or enhance their health care because they have no idea how much it's going to cost. Like, it might make sense to go get an MRI or it might make sense to do these things, but we, we're not com- we're not taking advantage of all the innovations in healthcare because there's so much happening. But you've got these really powerful incumbent healthcare players that are not their dinosaurs in many ways. Their technology is is absolutely completely dinosauric and insane. I mean, it's it's insane how much of this industry is still run on faxes mm. and paper. Um, mm-hmm. And so what we really are wanting to do long term is is create really a first true healthcare marketplace where we're giving the consumers access to the options of care they need. You know, we're doing STD testing now, but the future is really genetic testing. We're shooting in the dark right now. We're going to look back on this period in time and just laugh like we are just guessing when yeah. we have a we have this blueprint in. Yeah. And some of this stuff is there and some of it's almost there. At home, like devices that we can do this stuff on the spot, that we can we can plan ahead. And, and also, you know, the prescriptions are necessary for certain things, but there's so much that we can be doing more with holistic, with CBDs and whatnot. So really Mm -hmm. creating a holistic healthcare model that gives the option and information and access to consumers and connects them with doctors and advice that they they need as they need it. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Well, thank you. Thank you. And thank your friend for like not getting tested and Mm -hmm. fucking up his own chances to have sex with a gorgeous woman. (laughs) And because, you know, that sound it sounds like that was the that was the seed that was the spark mm-hmm. that was like do this create yeah. this you know and so really grateful that you exist really grateful that you're doing this work and i yeah. i can just sense into the impact that it's already having and that it will continue to have on all of our sexual journeys. So mm-hmm. Ignite Intimacy, go check it out. The Safe Sex app in the Apple Store coming to Android soon. Stay tuned. Safe app. Dot me. Dot me is the website and on social media. Yes, follow us at the Safe App. So it's at T H E S A F E A P P. We have really fun social, particularly Instagram, but follow us everywhere. It's across the board, the Safe App. Awesome. Cool. Lauren. Awesome. Woo-hoo-hoo. Shine on, Mama. Thank you for making the time to, to meet with us today on your way to the airport. Thank you for having me. All right, and we'll see you around. Soon. Yes. <laughs> All right, Ignite Intimacy community, check it out, the Safe Sex app in the Apple App Store, and you can also go to safeapp.me for more information. And yeah, thank you for joining us for these conversations. This is an important one, but it certainly isn't the only one. So make sure you get tested, share your status, We're shifting the conversation around this and so incredibly grateful to be on the journey with you. Coming up next is Miss Noel. So get ready. And if you haven't yet, go to 
your cell phone and open up a text message and text IGNITE to number 444-999. We do have a couple of giveaways from Foria and Dame Products for you all, and we'll be choosing those winners by March 20th. All right, 444-999, the word IGNITE, and here is Noel. Contribute. One lives out, lives it out fully, then the pivot and unscheduled move within. All that exposure ripens the pomegranate, but to loosen the jewels, you have to smack it. Call it picking up the pen or turning on the dremel. Definitely call it taking in a lover. When creation is tumescent, it doesn't care how, only that you spread your mind or heart or legs and contribute. It is what got me here now to this alphabet and in a minute with his body. I am scanning where he is and what I will do, the way I want to create all over him, move his torso like an unedited poem, only with emphasis, only italicized. Thanks for tuning in to another conversation on the Ignite Intimacy podcast hotline. We love that you choose to spend your time with us. Check us out at igniteintimacy.com. Subscribe to us on iTunes and leave us a review and a rating. It helps more people know about us. We love to hear from you. You can email us with questions, comments, or suggestions to hello at igniteintimacy.com. And tell your friends. Music was arranged by Jason Pfaff and Mike Corey. And this podcast is produced by yours truly, Laura Aisha. Thanks again, and we'll see you on the next one. In the meantime, let your light shine bright and ignite your intimacy. Intimacy.